RNAi was clearly recognized as a, as a powerful new approach for, for developing new medicines. And the pharma industry clearly in, uh, had, a, had a strong interest, and the venture community also had a very strong interest in trying to realize that potential. There's a lot of excitement in the field, not just at Long Island, but in industry, in academics. It was a new field emerging for target identification, and then industry took off and started to look at how you apply it to developing medicines. And I think the big challenge there was knowing where to go. The Nature paper by El Bashir et al. from the Tushel Lab was a real groundbreaking discovery because it showed for the first time that RNAi can be harnessed in mammalian cells. The scientists that were at this meeting were in awe of the finding because if it could be harnessed in a human being, it could in fact be used as a way of developing a whole new class of medicines. After the Zimmerman et al. paper, then pharmaceutical companies actually said, you know, I think there might be the potential to use these RNAs as drugs. In particular for me, you know, writing the paper was a great experience. I got to work directly with other leaders in the field and, you know, learned a lot about how to communicate um, the science and how to tell the story of RNAi and get the excitement going in the field about what we had done. And so they started to believe a little bit more of the Kool-Aid that we were drinking around Elm Island, which, which suggested that not only could we develop this technology, but we could really make it into a drug. And so it was an incredibly interesting time when everybody was getting into the act. As time went on, it, it was clear that solving delivery was going to be a major hurdle. They looked for earlier stage research to cut and RNAi became something that they abandoned, essentially. From the outside perspective, there was doubt on, the, you know, whether we could move RNA interference um, into therapeutic development. I don't know if that ever existed inside these walls. I believe that all of us felt like it was something we could do. It just took time and it took perseverance and focus. Our friends on the outside who were building these capabilities that we were helping to enable, they were a little bit less convinced that um, this was really going to lead to therapies. For us, within the walls of El Nilum, getting this to work was live or die. If we did not make this successful, we were dead. 